So this video will show how to load a Bloodhound file from an external source, such as from our workshops. Okay, so taking our weekly live workshops as an example, which you can find on our website under the support menu, training workshops. And if we scroll down, here are the recorded workshops. If we click Bloodhound workshop recordings, this gives us a nice list of tons and tons of, of recordings from past weekly workshops, all questions from customers, right? Okay, so you're scrolling through here and we find a topic that interests us. MA crossover with a price extension, okay. Let's say we want to download the Bloodhound template for that. You can click the link here, or if you're already watching the YouTube video, we can scroll down, click show more in the description, and there is the file, Bloodhound template file and the NT chart template file, okay? So we'll start with Bloodhound. So we'll download that file here takes us to the download page. In the description at the bottom here, it tells you where to save it in case you ever forget. Uh, but we'll click download here. So, and then we'll go to the documents folder, NinjaTrader 8, templates, and then Bloodhound. I, I have a lot of backup folders here, but Bloodhound right here. And we'll save that. Now it's saved by the date it was recorded on. Okay, we'll save that. Okay, so now that we have the file on our computer in the typical location, let's bring Bloodhound up and load that file. So first, let's add Bloodhound to our chart as always. So under Shark Indicators, we will go Bloodhound. And the button at the top here loads the Bloodhound uh, window. If you don't know that, then you will want to watch our Getting Started video series. It's four videos. It's on our website under the documentation for Bloodhound. Okay, so we've got Bloodhound up here. We'll go File. It might show up here, but if it doesn't, we'll go Open. And there's our file. Okay, and again, we're looking for the date that it was recorded on. We'll hit Open. And if all goes well, it should just load it up. Nothing will appear here typically because we haven't selected a logic template. Just like we discussed in the first video of the Getting Started series, inside this template file, you can have any number of logic template rules or sets of rules inside that file. We call them logic templates. You can find them here, okay? So in this dropdown, now if Zach had discussed multiple topics during that session, they would all be listed and named here. This one, he only has one, and then you'll see just a, a blank one too, okay? So, Crossover with pullback and bar clear of moving average. That sounds like the topic that was discussed in that video. All right, so we've loaded that up. We can see this was a fairly complicated uh, setup that Zach did that day. But you'll notice that, uh, you know, we've got our Bloodhound file. That's all great. And we can switch between the, uh, the templates if he has multiple. But you'll notice that we have signals, but there's no indicators on our chart. So if I click on just any random solver, pretty much all of them will make use of some indicator, right? So this crossover solver uses the, the EMA crossing the SMA, right? And so those two indicators are not currently on our chart. Now we could go through and add each one, and it's a good idea to watch the recording and follow along, so maybe you would add them by hand. Uh, but if you want to load up the, the actual chart template that Zach worked on during that session, um, you can do that by going back to the video and download the chart template. So we'll click that here. And same thing, it tells you where to save it. It's in the templates chart folder. So we'll click download and I'll show you. So we'll go back up to documents, NinjaTrader 8, templates. So we'll go up to templates and we'll find the chart folder, chart, right there. And that is where we save, and you know, it's not just Bloodhound chart templates, but any NinjaTrader chart templates will typically save here, okay? So we'll save that. Uh, it's already, I've already downloaded it. I will replace that. All right, now to load a chart template in NinjaTrader, we'll go to our chart, right click on the chart, go to templates, load. Okay. And there it is. Again, it's named by the date that it was recorded. We'll load that up. And there you go. So that loads up the indicators that were used during that session, as well as if you have already downloaded the Bloodhound file, 
which is why I recommend doing that first, it will load that onto your chart as well. Now you might notice that you're getting kind of weird output from Bloodhound down here. And again, those getting started videos, they do explain this, what's going on and how to fix it. But your instinct needs to be that whenever you see this weird output, go to the top and select the relevant logic template, right? So if there's multiple topics, choose the one that you're looking for. But when there's no logic selected, it gives you this weird output. Now you may not like Zach's styling, you may love it, but uh, that is the purpose of a, a Ninja Trader chart template. Not only loads up the indicators, but also the styling. So hopefully you like the, the way Zach styles his charts, but if you don't, then once you load it, then you can start tweaking some styles if you want to really dig in and customize it. Okay, one last thing I wanna show is let's let me just demonstrate it and you'll see right away what I'm talking about. So let me download this one right here, if I recall. And we'll download, this is a Bloodhound file that I'm downloading. I just wanna show you one thing here. So that's from July. And we'll go into our Bloodhound file and we'll load the one from July. I just wanna show this to you. Here we go. So let's say you get this window right here. It says map indicators that are not installed. And you wanna read what it says. This is not an error message. It's more just kind of giving you uh, something that you need to do, some homework, okay? So it says the following indicators were not found on your system. So basically what happened was Zach, when he created this template file in the workshop, he used, inside that file, he used the Lizard Indicators AMA indicator, their AMA ADX VMA. Now we don't normally, we don't make a habit of using third party or premium indicators, but Lizard Indicators is an exception, mainly because they're, they're extremely popular and relatively affordable by industry standards. They actually have a, a set of free indicators as well. You can find their stuff at lizardindicators.com. Research it yourself if you want. Um, but that's, that's typically the only sort of third party sort of premium indicators that we ever demonstrate in our workshops. But if you ever see this message that says, hey, this Bloodhound file you're trying to load references an indicator that's not currently installed on this computer. So it says, hey, what am I supposed to do? So by default, it, it tries to pick a, uh, a similar replacement. So it says, okay, this one, this has the name ADX VMA in it. We found one that has the word ADX VMA in it. So it tries to select what is most likely the most relevant. Now you can choose one that is similar enough. It might take a little bit of work to get it exactly the right one. Or this is notifying you to say, oh, I got to back out, hit cancel, go download those indicators, and then try and load this up again and see if this message doesn't even come up. Okay, so let's say I just choose this as the replacement. I make sure that it matches what was demonstrated in the workshop um, for the settings and we'll hit okay. Now it may not be exactly right, but uh, this at least lets you bypass that so you can move forward. All right, that covers the basics of loading a Bloodhound file from an external source. Mm -hmm.